Hey guys, Anoxia here bringing you this commentary for my director view debut here at Phaser Games. Before we get into things, I just want to give a little detail on the gameplay you're watching. I'm using a UMP45 suppressed, even though later on in the game I run out of ammo and had to pick up somebody else's gun. I'm running sleight of hand so I can reload and start shooting faster, quick drop pro so I can zoom in faster and not get caught slowly throwing a stun grenade, and steady aim so if I'm, if I'm a, in a battle and it's close quarters and not looking to be in my favor, I can no scope spray with better accuracy and not have to spend time looking down the sights, and by then I'd probably be dead. I was using the UMP45 because at the time my friends were telling me it was buffed and I was, and I was a bit iffy if I would get a decent gameplay with it because I hadn't used it at all. So I was a bit neutral on it. I hadn't used it a lot before. It, I, I didn't know. I didn't have any experience with this gun. I always thought it was just okay because when uh, the only time I used to use this gun was uh, when I prestiged and it was in the default classes. Because at that time you don't have any of your custom classes and you can't really choose what gun you want to use between out of the five. So... Uh, I, I ended up getting a decent gameplay. I'll give you a little spoil alert, so I'll give you a few seconds if you don't really want to hear the score. So, I'll give you a few seconds. One, two, three, and four. I went uh, 30 and four in this gameplay. I like I, I could have done better, obviously, but the elusive Moab evaded me for this game. But 30 and four is still pretty good gameplay. Don't judge. My equipment that I use to record the gameplays and set them up with is a uh, Hophodge HD PVR Original Edition, not the Gaming Edition because that is not a PVR, that is a potato. I use Audacity to record the commentary and Sony Vegas to mix it all in and sync the commentary with the gameplay. And occasionally when I record on the PC I use Camtasia. It's a great thing to have but it's very pricey unfortunately. It's $300 right now on their website I'm pretty sure. So, for this commentary what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be giving you guys a little bit of info about me and letting you guys get to know me better. So my name is Matt. I'm from Canada, and other than by and then other than uh, the polar bear ride, sleeping in an igloo, and playing hockey all day, it's pretty nice up here. I'm 15 years old, and, it's re and I'm really new to commentating in YouTube. I've only recently started up, and it's only been about a month since I started my own channel, and I've been working to get bigger. So I thought, after a while, hey, I know some people at Phaser, and they seem pretty cool. So why not give it a shot, right? Honestly, it's a nice channel with really nice people. So I'm happy to be here and be commentating for you guys today. So I haven't figured out what kind of series I was going to be doing for the games channel. I'm going to be commentating for sure. But also I was thinking about doing some Ninja Diffuse montages and funny reactions. It's crazy how oblivious some people on Call of Duty are sometimes. And it's just funny exploiting that for a laugh. If you don't know what a Ninja Diffuse is, it's when in Search and Destroy or or uh, Demolition. Most commonly though, Search and Destroy. It's when somebody is planting the bomb, and you go up behind them and defuse it without them noticing and making it embarrassing for them. A lot of the times you spin around and they don't notice, but I've seen some really oblivious people let me defuse the bomb on them when I was standing on top of the bomb, even on top of the bomb site, and just spinning around in circles and shooting off, and they haven't noticed. Most casual, most usually, it's uh, split screeners who uh, are usually, they usually have a friend over and they're playing Call of Duty with them. So, uh... The screen is sort of split in half for them, so it's harder for them to see, which I can understand would be a hard uh, thing to see somebody defusing the bomb when you only have half your TV screen, especially depending on how big your TV is. But, uh, yeah, so I don't really have a lot of ideas for series. If you guys see something that you, if you guys want to see something that you don't, that you don't often see on the channel, feel free to leave it in the comments section, because I would love to have some, uh, different ideas for you guys, because, uh, I just want to bring out something really entertaining and something I'm sure that you guys want to see. So, this gameplay is about 10 minutes long, so I have a lot to commentate over. So, I think I'm going to tell you guys a little story from uh, my childhood. My childhood is uh, not so interesting, but I've had some interesting moments. So, I think I'm going to start off with a story about when I was a kid. I was uh, probably about 5 or 6 at the time. And it was in my neighbor's backyard. They recently had some uh, puppies. They had two Dalmatian dogs, and they had a, a litter of uh, Dalmatian puppies. So I was back in there just playing fetch with a piece of wood. Those puppies, man, I love those puppies. Those puppies are amazing. But uh, the mom and dad were kind of strict. Yep. So uh, we were playing, and I went to throw a stick for one of the puppies to go fetch. And I sort of hit the mom and dog on the head. And she was not very happy about that. She, yeah, she sort of uh, came down and uh, stared me down in the face. Like, she was giving me the death stare. Like, I was Luke Skywalker and she was Darth Vader and she was ready to cut my hand off. But uh, she came at me. I did the worst thing when I was a kid. Uh, 
when that when I hit that mama dog in the head, I did the worst thing I possibly could have done in that situation. I stared that mama dog in the eye. That is a sign of aggression towards dogs. And after you hit them on the head with a piece of wood, they don't take that very nicely. So she came at me with a furious passion, and I ran about three dot blocks down the road, like, I don't know, supernova speeds. So I made it to my door, surprisingly enough, without being hit. But I forgot when you hit doors, you can't walk through them. So I had to stop and open the door. And when I stopped to open the door, the dog pounced on me. And that's when she got me. She got down on my face. And she bit where I don't know why I'm holding my hands up to my face because you guys can't see me. Maybe I should do a face cam. But uh, she came down on the left side of my face, right down near where my uh, sideburns would be. And a bit onto my left cheek so if she would have been actually a tiny bit over to the right of my face she probably would have gotten my left eye and that I would have probably would have got uh, I probably would have lost sight in my left eye which is kind of serious and uh, I'm kind of happy that the dog uh, <laughs> didn't hit my left eye it was really serious and there I die on my 16 kill streak and uh, I remember when being bit I fainted and uh, I woke up in the car. Actually, no. First time I woke up in the living room. And uh, it was just my mom. Like, having... I was on her lap. And uh, she had a cloth up to my face. And I was bleeding profusely. And uh, she looked like she was the one bitten by the dog. And uh, I was just like, oh, I was really phased. And uh, I didn't know what was going on. Little puns there for you. Anyway. Uh, again, after that, I was like up for like maybe two seconds, and then I just fainted back. I just kind of woke up and went back. And uh, I remember waking back up in the car, and same look on her face. She was like, oh my god, my son's going to die. And uh, then I remember waking up after I got my stitches in the hospital. And I can't remember how many stitches I got. I think I got like eight or twelve stitches. I can't remember, but you can still see the scar. I got a scar off that, and you can still see the scar today sometimes. And uh, if I haven't mentioned it already, this gameplay is 10 minutes, so I still have a lot more to go. I'm going to tell another story. Again, when I was a kid, probably about 5 or 6. Over here in Canada, it snows a lot, in case you didn't know. So, one day we had so much snow, it was going over the top of our fences in our backyard. So, me and my brother were out in the backyard uh, sledding. And I went down, and I forgot, when you're using a sled, if you turn to the right, if you lean down to the right and tilt the sled right, then it will go left, and if you lean left, it will go right. So I was uh, coming upon a pole, and the pole was on my left side, and I, made, I wanted to make sure I didn't hit that pole, so I started leaning right, just thinking I would go right, and uh, but no, I went. I started to go left, and I was like, why am I not going left? I'm going to hit this pole, oh my god. So I started leaning more right, like, come on, sled, turn right. And uh, anyway, the sled didn't work for me, and I ended up hitting that pole face on, and, uh, but it was weird. I didn't hurt my face. I hurt my leg. And I got a hairline fracture in my leg. And it was so bad that when I went to the doctors, they actually had to re-break my leg back into place and then put a cast on it for three weeks. And uh, it was that severe. And I didn't know it was that severe. So anyway, they put the cast on for three months. And uh, it, 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 wasn't the best, uh, it wasn't the best of experiences. But I have a little bit of a theory because uh, when I hit that pole, it wasn't that bad. Like, I remember blacking out, but it didn't seem like it would do that much damage to me or most, like, my legs. Because <laughs> my legs didn't seem like they would have even hit the pole, really. If anything, it was at that kind of position where it would be, like, a funny fail thing where you would go towards the pole and the pole would end up right between your legs, but it didn't hit between my legs because, you know, I had the slide in front of me. So... I have a kind of a theory because uh, when I blacked out, again, it didn't look like it hit my legs. It didn't look like it would even hurt me. I thought I would just hit it and then like slide over and be like, ow, like my face. But uh, my brother, I'm pretty sure he beat the living hell out of me when I went down. Uh, he wasn't very fond of me back then. He didn't like me as a kid. He liked to beat me up. I was, uh, I remember one time he just like spun me around in blankets and uh, he used to make fun of me a lot and I will admit it. Shamefully enough, I was the biggest crybaby. Like, I would be laughing if some of my brother was making fun of, like, my cousins or something. He'd be like, Haha, Matthew, shut up, you're an idiot. I would go crying. I'm not even joking. It's it's embarrassing, but I would go crying to my mom. I'd be like, oh my god, mom. mom just, Mark just told me to shut up. Oh my god. Go ground him and put him in the cage for three weeks. But anyway, the uh, it's all done now. 
<laughs> the gameplay is over. There's Marvel getting a kill, and uh, you see me running around the corner now. There I am, little photo bomber as I am. But anyway, thanks for watching. Anoxia out.